Okay, sorry about that little pause there. I don't know why my computer's doing that. Okay, let's take a minute and let's review what you just did on your quiz. Okay, so you can even check your quiz if you'd like. Okay, let's start with our masculine and feminine. Okay, any, ace, m, ace, is, em, or, um, e, ibis, e, ibis. Okay, remember we had the Avon rule for this to decide if it's feminine. And this one was, it ended in is, or it ends in a double consonant like ns and is one syllable, okay? Now, if it ended in the letter s, which we did write on our sheet, that is kind of a, um, it doesn't always work. It's more, remember each, Sometimes we have don't we don't have definite rules in Latin. So one of your words that is an exception right now that ends in s and is one syllable but it's not a double consonant is the word pace. Okay? Pace pedes. When you get here it's actually pedum. Okay. So that's just a little little quick thing, but if it ends in that double consonant and one syllable, they're going to want the e in there. Okay, so let's keep moving. Neuter. Neuter. Um, this one, remember, is our, our flumen, right? So it's just our regular. So it's going to be any. And then its ending was ah, uh, right? Neuter law. The nominative and accusative are the same. Any, ah. Uh, and then these look largely just like this. Is, um, e, ibis, e, ibis. All right, now let's take a look at our eight-eyed monsters. And remember, that's these, okay? So they really like those eyes. So our neuter, eight-eyed monsters, any, Ia, mare maria, right? Neuter law, these are going to stay the same. Any ia, is, iam, these are our eight eyes. E, ibis, and then that ablative singular, which is where it'll really trick you, is e, ibis. And remember, we just saw that when we went over our question at the beginning. We saw um, Marie, right? Marie, which would be right here. Okay, hopefully you did well on that quiz. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through and we're just gonna decline a few words that we've never declined in class before. And we're just gonna use all these rules to kind of see how we do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a word up. So our first word is gonna be, these are all gonna be third declensions. So our first word is awis. Okay, so the first thing you need to figure out is what is its gender? And then you're gonna write out the how to decline the whole word. Okay, so you can go in and pause it now and then we'll work, we'll check your work. Okay, so pause. All right, so this is how it works. This one fits that Avon rule, right? So this one is a feminine. All right, so let's work it out. The this is the stem, here's the ending. So we're gonna have, we already know it's nominative singular. Put its stem in again. Any, ace. All right, now if you want, and this is an easy way, just go on ahead and put your stem in to each slot, okay? All right, any, ace, and then it's M, ace, is, ooh, now we get to this one, and that's the tricky one, right? So what was our rule for this? It had to end in is, or a double consonant like that maybe, and one syllable, okay? Does it meet either of those requirements? It does, it ends in that is. So this one's gonna be awiam, Awi, 
Uh, Wibis, now we're just filling in the endings. Eh. Ibis. Okay, so that was our first one. Let's do three more. All right. So our, oopsie. Our second one here is going to be the word. This is a little longer. Mercator. Okay, this is one of your new words. Remember what it means? Looks very similar to the English word. It means merchant, right? Okay, so if we're looking at this word, the first thing we have to decide is its gender. So you have to figure out its gender and then go on ahead and write it out. Okay, so pause it and then come back and let's check your work. Okay, so here we know that it doesn't meet the Avon rule. It's not flumen, it's not mare, and it's not animal. So we know that it's not a neuter. And we've also practiced how to make it plural. So we know it should be mercator, mercatores. Okay, so this one is masculine. Okay, so we have mercator, mercator ace. Okay, now we could fill this whole thing out. Mercator, what would this one be? M, right? Mercator, any, ace, M, ace. Now, just to spare you guys on time, pretend I write that out the, out the stem. Any, ace, M, ace, is. Now we get here. Mercator. Now, does this fit our is rule? Remember, how do we decide between if it's an em? It'll be em if it ends in is, a double consonant, and one uh, one syllable. I can't write. <laughs> and one. Let me see. Let me try that again. One syllable. Okay. Does it meet that? Mercator. No, that's three syllables. It definitely does not meet that one, right? And it doesn't end in is. So we're going to put in mercator um. Okay, let's pretend I write the whole thing out. E, ibis, and then what comes down here? E, ibis. Okay, so this is what this one should look like. Okay, I'm just saving us time by not writing it, but you can see how these endings work. Okay, so you've got to find that stem. Find that stem, you keep that stem the whole time. All right, let's look at the next word. So two more. Let's do flumen. Now that one should trigger in your mind immediately what its gender is. Okay, so pause it, write yours out, and start it up again. Okay, so this one is a neuter, right? And we already know because we have written this so many times in our picture that it has a stem change, flumin ah. Okay, so it's gonna keep that stem change once it gets past. Remember, we have to do the neuter law first. So that accusative and nominative look the same. So flumen, sorry, flumen, flumina, these look the same. Now we're gonna keep this stem change. Flumen, now what's our ending here? Any, ah, any, ah. Then we go to is, okay, let me go to is. Flum, we keep that stem change. Flumin, um. Flumin, e. Flumin, keeping that stem change. What is this one? Ibis. Flumin, e. Flumin, ibis. Okay. Do you see how that works? So this neuter law, these stay the same. 
but this stem change from here, from this one, transfers down into all of these forms, okay? And then we just have our simple endings that we've already memorized. Is, um, e, ibis, e, ibis. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everyone. If it doesn't, or if you didn't do well when we checked it, you need to rewrite these several times, okay? Just over the next um, a couple of days and then after you get back from Easter break, okay? All right, let's try our last one. Our last one is going to be Mare. Now, Mara should already trigger in your mind, right? Should trigger in that mind, in your mind, this wacko picture, okay? All right, so pause it, write up the gender, and write it out. Okay, so this one is neuter, and remember, it's an eight-eyed monster. So, we're going to be Mare, Maria, we've already memorized that, Neuter law, these are the same. Maria. Okay. Now it likes its eyes. Here's its stem. Let's just write its stem out. Mar. 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 Okay. So here we have is. Now remember this is an eight-eyed, so it likes all of its eyes. E. Ibis. E, Ibis. Okay, that was a lot of work. I hope that that went well for you. All right, let's move to the second part of our review, which is over our head verb sentence patterns. Okay, now in order to do a head verb sentence pattern, we have to have a few things. So you can open up your workbook to exercise number 11, okay? You're not actually going to write in your book today because you're gonna do this on your own tomorrow. And we're only gonna do the odd numbered ones, okay? But let's, before we get started, let's just quickly write out on our sheet anywhere our, and I'm gonna just write it along the edge here, R F. Ere, 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 ere. Move a little smiley guy. And then our passives are re, a re, e, e, eere. Okay, so go ahead and write those out so that you've got those to reference. Okay, all right. So let's try number one. If we're translating this, we are saying, well, let's read it. Puer yuli something audient. So the boys hear yulia, accusative, right? So that would be yuliam. Yulia sings. All right, so now we're going to change this into our indirect statement, okay, which is our head verb sentence pattern. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the boys hear yulia singing. Okay, so we know we have our first one. Pueri, the boys hear, audi, now this is they hear, this is plural. The boys hear, so now we have our nominative, right? Plus our main verb or our head verb, okay? And then what do we need in here, right? The boys hear Yulia. This ending is going to be Yuliam because we need the accusative. Sing. Con. Now this is going to be the infinitive. So this was conmit. So we know it's going to be a third or a fourth. Which one is it? This one is a third. Conere. Okay, the boys, they hear, so plural verb there, Yuliam singing. Okay, the boys hear Julia singing. 
I'm going to leave that one up and we'll put the second one below it. So let's go down to number three. This one is saying in the first part, it says Marcus Quint Wiedet. Marcus sees Quintus. Okay, so we know who is being seen. What happens to Quintus? Quintus Yaket, so he falls or lies, I'm sorry. I guess in the sentence before this, he fell. <laughs> okay, so Quintus lies on the ground. All right, so when I see that, one of the first things I'm thinking is, ah, I have a prepositional phrase in that sentence, in terra, okay? So I kind of want to block that out, put the parentheses around it, and just kind of set it aside in my brain, okay? Because that's not the important part right now. All right, so if we're going to put into a head verb sentence pattern, the English that we're looking for is Marcus, do you see it under there? Marcus sees... Quintus lying in terra, okay, on the ground. Let's try this sentence. So we have Marcus, so there's our nominative, okay, and then we're going to have a longer spot in here. Let's get to our, I'm going to just box this out so you can Okay, let's get to our main verb. So this is a singular subject. Marcus, this was sees, right? Yeah, sees. We did. Who does he see? He sees the accusative. So here's our accusative. Quintum, right? Now we had our prepositional phrase. Let's come back to that actually. Okay. And then we had the word yaket, remember? So if it was ya ket just above it, this means it's a number two verb, right? Because it's the et. So we're gonna need ya, so now we're doing our infinitive, right? So we need ya kere, and then we need on the ground, in ter, now this is after in, a in terra. Okay, make sure you understand those. If you need to pause it so you can see this longer, then do that, but I'm gonna go on ahead and erase. Okay, so we can see our pattern there. Nominative plus accusative plus infinitive plus the, oh, we forgot to label it. This is our head verb, right? Okay. Let's try number five. Oh boy, so just before this, Julius is hearing Marcus um, shouting. So number five says, the father sees phili, philium, sees the son. The son, akur, and do you remember how it ended? Akur it, akur it, runs up, okay? So we're trying to put all that together. So what we're doing is we're saying the father sees the sun run up. All in one sentence instead of two. Okay, so our nominative, so let's just write our pattern out. Nominative plus accusative plus infinitive plus our head verb. You know what, let's use him. Ha, that's kind of funny. Plus our head verb. Okay, so and I'm gonna put these in brackets. All right, so our subject was the father, and then it was sees, so we're going to go to our head verb, right? It's happening in his mind, right? Um, head verb, okay? He sees. Now what do I need? I need an accusative. The father sees the son, yes, the son, feely accusative. He's a masculine, um, so the sun run up. A kur. Oops, two R's. Now this was a kurit, so it's going to be one of these. This was just a regular number three. A kurere. Okay. All right. So that was number five. Let's try number seven. 
Um, so this one, the first part is saying, Julius, well, just before this, um, they'd seen Quintus open his eyes, okay? So this one's saying, Julius sees Quintus, Quintus is alive, hooray! All right, so let's put this into a head verb. Julius sees that Quintus is alive. All right, so there's our pattern. Let's just fill this out. Okay, so we have Julius sees we get Quintus, so there's our accusative, Quintum is. Now we need an infinitive for is. This is one of our irregulars. The infinitive is esse, and then we're gonna say that he's alive. Now I want you to notice this is an adjectival ending pointing back to Quintum. It's describing that Quintus is alive, not Julius, right? We're saying Quintus is alive. So these two endings need to modify each other. This is an accusative masculine singular, so that also needs to be an accusative masculine singular. Okay. Two more. So number nine, Julius sees four chicks, pulos. The chicks are dead. That's really sad, isn't it? Okay. So when we put that into one big sentence, what we're doing is we are saying, Yulia sees the chicks are dead. Okay. Yulius, Yulia, sorry, sees the chicks are dead. So our, our subject is Yulia, right? Yulia, now our head verb was sees. What does she see? She sees the accusative subject in here. She sees that the chicks, so this was pullus, so we want chicks, plural accusative here. The chicks are, so this was an is or are. So remember our est or sunt, the infinitive of that is esse, okay? Yulia sees the chicks are, now we're saying more to us a um. So again, we're describing those chicks. Okay, so we want more to us. All right, last one. Number 11. Now this one will be a little bit trickier, okay? But you guys can do it. All right, so we have Amelia sees. Now Amelia sees the dead chicks. So those are both in the accusative. Pulos mortuos. The puli mortui, so the dead chicks are being held by Yulia. Okay, we see that by Yulia, so it's, oh, there's probably going to be a passive here. So we have the puli mortui, the dead chicks are being held tenentur, tenentur. So tenet was what number verb? Number two, right? Okay, but we're saying tenentur, so that means they're being held. They're not doing the holding, they're being held by Yulia. So we need the passive over here, right? Okay, so let's try to write out this head verb sentence pattern. I'm gonna write it down here so I have plenty of room. Okay, Amelia is our subject. She sees, so let's put that way down here. We'll put our head verb way down here. Okay, we'll move him down here. All right. Okay, now we need our accusative subject. Amelia sees the dead chicks. The dead chicks are what Amelia sees. 
So those will be pulos, okay? And we need its adjective, mortuos. Okay, so that's just describing that. The dead chick, so there's our accusative subject. Being held, so there's our verb. Being held, and remember what we said, we need a, we know it's a number two, but we need a passive, right? Teneri, now who's holding them? Here's our prepositional phrase, a yulia. Okay, did I get that right? Yes, okay. Didn't want to put the wrong words in there on you guys. <laughs> okay, so Amelia sees the chicks being held. That's if we had to get down to the skeleton to match this, it would be Amelia sees the chicks being held. Do you see that? Okay, and the rest of it, you have to figure out which kind of chicks, the dead chicks, by whom, by Yulia, okay? All right, now this is a little easier to do on your worksheet because they give you, you're just, they're just looking for those endings, okay? All right, let me check and see. I think that was it for the day, but let me make sure we are good to go. Um, yeah, it looks like we're pretty, pretty close to the end here, maybe another minute or two. So the only other thing I wanted to kind of hit on is just to remind you that this sentence pattern is one of three ways to use that infinitive. Okay, so we remember that our other way, other two ways of using that, which hopefully you guys had some success finding those, was with your potest. So remember we had Yulia Canere potest, right? Yulia is able to sing, that's that complimentary one. And then we also had hominibus spirare necesse est, okay? And this one was the subject, subjective one, okay? For humans, that's the dative there. So it's a dative of possession. So when it's showing possession in that way, um, like to the humans is another way to say it. Um, so humans or for humans, it is necessary to breathe. So remember we use this two different ways, or I'm sorry, three different ways. So we have the head verb sentence pattern, our complementary and our subjective, okay, for those infinitives. All right, well, you guys are getting ready for spring break next week, although it probably already feels like you're kind of on spring break in some ways. But um, if you're all caught up and you're staying fine with your, um, your endings, you've been doing your work and everything else, a good break is a nice thing. Um, if you're not caught up, you may need to use that time to catch up. Um, excuse me. Um, we have, I think, seven more weeks of school after this, so it's um, important to keep pushing. I know if you're like me, you're feeling like it is time to be done. We're almost there, okay? Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention is I don't know how many people have the opportunity to have a, a church service online. And our church, um, Winchester Anglican Church, is doing church online. And if you are interested at all in just finding um, a service for Easter or Palm Sunday or Good Friday, um, you can check out our website, uh, winchesteranglican.com. Um, and that's not a plug necessarily. It's just that we're all such an, in such a weird place right now. And I'm, you know, just it's hard when you can't make it when you're used to going to services um, and we can't have services right now. So anyways, just an invite there, really. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful spring break and I'll see you later.